Hey, ALC small groups, I'm so glad to be with you wherever you're meeting and your homes or out of the park or uh, on somebody's iPhone or um, in the morning, evening, wherever you're at. We're beginning a new series. Uh, this is our outreach series, and we're going to begin with the subject of the altar call, why we have an altar call at Abundant Life. The altar call is a very special thing to me personally because it changed my life. Um, I wasn't raised in Christ. I wasn't raised in church. I didn't raise knowing anything about Jesus or anything about the Bible. So when we started going to church, it was a small Baptist church. They had an altar call every single Sunday service. And at first I didn't think much about it. It, it just it was something I just kind of sloughed off. But then one Sunday, I looked up and I watched my mom get out of her seat, walk down front during the altar call. I'll be honest with you, it spooked me. Uh, it scared me. I, I thought, uh, this is not good. Something just shifted. Something just changed, but it doesn't really apply to me yet. She can do her thing. I'm going to do my thing. Then within a couple of Sundays, I noticed my friend and my brothers go down front for the altar call. Now it's getting closer and I am feeling deeply threatened. This is not good. Things are shifting and changing. I don't know what they're doing down there, but it's not good. Well, the following Sunday is where it all came home. Now, instead of them walking down, I am feeling this internal pressure that I've never experienced before. It was like there was a an unknown force that was trying to move me out of the pew into the aisle and down the aisle, and I grabbed that pew with all my strength and held on with Superman strength, thinking I could crush that oak. And honestly, the, one of the reasons I'm saved today is that my best friend looked at me and said, that's just ridiculous, and he physically shoved me into the aisle and told me, Ben, just go down there. So I went down there, I responded to the altar call, and thus began my walk with the Lord. So what I want to do for you is I want to just share with you some of the nuts and bolts of the altar call. I believe a good scripture for this in it is in Acts chapter 2, verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter, Brothers, what shall we do? Now notice Peter had just preached to them, and they're saying, hey, we're cut to the heart. We need to know what to do. We don't know what to do. Tell us. That's what the altar call is for, is to tell people how they can respond to the moving of the Spirit in their life. So Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. So what Peter did, did then was provide them clarity on this is how you can respond to what the Holy Spirit is doing in you. That's what the altar call provides for us is clarity. So I want to just kind of go through and, and look at some of this. The uh, first thing I believe is that um, people will follow clarity more than they will follow character. I'm going to say that again. People follow clarity more than they follow character. That's why it's so important that we teach people of character to provide clarity. The altar call provides clarity to the person who is saying, I'm experiencing the Holy Spirit. The Word of God's been preached to me. What am I supposed to do? And so Peter said, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, and you will have your sins forgiven. I remember um, there was a guy that I met in the lobby of our local church. I got to know him just a little bit. But then we went into the service. We had our worship service. The word was preached. And I got to the altar call, and I watched him, and I could tell he was getting antsy. Now, this wasn't the bad kind of antsy. He was waiting me, waiting for me to give the altar call to say, if you need to receive Jesus or be restored to Jesus, would you just lift up your hand? He couldn't wait. Boom! There his hand goes. He was waiting for the moment. I need to respond. I need to take action on this movement that the Holy Spirit is providing in me. So the altar call provides clarity of 
This is how I respond to the Holy Spirit. Uh, the second thing I think, see that the altar call provides is opportunity. Um, the first thing, it, it goes with opportunity for the guest. So the brand new person that comes into your small group or into our Sunday service, when they gain the confidence that, oh, if the Spirit moves on me, if I feel convicted, I know how to respond. So it provides opportunity for the brand new person. Also, often it's your first brand new person that is going to be the guy that does respond to the altar call. The second thing I see it is in this opportunity is it provides opportunity for family. A lot of times you have a family member that's living for Jesus, and when they bring another family member that they want to give their lives to Jesus, they're waiting for that altar call. They're waiting for that altar call so that their family member has an opportunity to give their life to Jesus as well. And then it provides an opportunity for the church member that they have the confidence that if I bring my coworker to church with me, there's going to be an altar call where that person has the opportunity to be saved. This actually happened to me. I had, um, we were doing a baptismal service. And in the baptismal service, uh, there was a, a gal that was being baptized, and before I preached, she came up to me and she said, Pastor, I got my whole family here, but this is the only time you're ever going to get them. You better go after them. <laughs> that, that was the intro to my message. She wanted to make sure that I provided an opportunity for all of her family to receive Jesus in the way that she had received Jesus. So it provides opportunity, and that's why we like to be consistent with the altar call, is to provide that opportunity for people bringing people to church. And then the altar call provides a clear opportunity for an encounter with Jesus and his Holy Spirit. And at ALC, we believe that every person needs community that leads to encounter that causes growth. So encounters is part of our core vision, is part of our, our core values. So the altar call provides opportunities for those encounters. One time I was at a pastor's conference, and um, there's a bunch of pastors and leaders, and this leader, what he did was he was speaking on the subject of how pastors and leaders at times can develop wounds in their heart that if the wound is allowed to fester, it starts to define you. And so you have to get before the Lord to allow the Lord to begin to cleanse that wound so the wound does not define you. He didn't get halfway through his message, and I was wishing the guy would stop so he would provide an altar call because I needed to respond. I remember the emotion of the moment. I almost thought about getting out of my seat before he was done and going down front. But I restrained myself and he preached for another half hour. But the moment that he said, if you're a pastor or leader in the room and you need to be cleansed of a wound, would you stand up? Boom, there I go. I stood up because I couldn't wait to respond to the altar call and have this wound cleansed in my heart to get a new beginning. Let me go ahead and give an altar call for this message. I believe that there are people that are listening to this right now, watching me right now, that as I have been speaking, you realize, you know what? I need to respond to Jesus. I need to give my life to Jesus and make him 100% Lord. I need to start bringing people to church so that I, they can have an opportunity to be saved. I need to buy in and, and, and bring a family member to church so they have an opportunity to be saved. I've been half-stepping or I've been compromising in my own private time, and I need to repent. If that's you, I want to encourage you, right where you're at, right now, just gently slip up your hand. You're in a small group. You don't have to make a big show of it unless you want to, but just gently slip up your hand and acknowledge, I need to respond to Jesus and the Holy Spirit right now. Now, if you just raised your hand and you're responding, I'm going to pray with you. Father, I thank you for the people that are raising their hands right now and saying, I need to respond to Jesus and the Holy Spirit. I believe that you sent Jesus into this earth. He went around doing good, healing all who were sick and all who were oppressed by the devil because God was with Jesus. 
Lord, I believe that Jesus died for my sins and he was buried in the grave for three days, but God resurrected him. And I believe that Jesus now rules in heaven, but I want Jesus to rule in my heart. Just say that with me. Say, I want Jesus to rule in my heart. Jesus, come in. Be my Savior and my Lord. I'm giving my all to you, Jesus, and I promise I'm going to live for you for the rest of my life. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I just gave an altar call right there, and I hope that you just had a fresh encounter with Jesus and his Holy Spirit that gives you a new beginning. <laughs>